So have you ever wondered whether it's possible to have more than one canvas in one document in Photoshop? Well, in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is answering two main questions. What are artboards and how do we create them? Cool, so just before we begin this video, if you found this video useful, then please do consider leaving a like on the video. And also remember to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more tutorials for Photoshop. So to answer the first question, what are artboards? Well, if you think about our normal documents that we have in Photoshop, when we open up, for example, an image, what we have is we have a plain image, one solo canvas that is made up of the dimensions of that image. So for example, if I loaded up a HD image from a film, then the canvas size would be 1920 by 1080 pixels. And what we can do is we can manipulate all of the layers within this image to create a new composition. But what you can also do when you've got a document like this open is you can actually create another one in the same document. So usually what we do if we want to create a new image is we go to file and new and create a new document. But what if we wanted this image to be within the same document? Well, what we can do is we can create things called artboards. And artboards are commonly used for things such as web design or even logo design. It's just a very quick way of creating multiple images within one document so we can preview, rearrange, create different layouts and have them all within one space. So the easiest way to activate artboards is at the very beginning when we create our document. So what we're going to be doing, as you can see, we're on the home page of Photoshop. This is the home page that appears when you open up Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create new. And now we can set a new document. So I'm just going to leave it as 1920 by 1080. I might just rename it quickly. Just to stay organized and you can make sure that your resolution is set to the correct one and also make sure that your color mode is set to the correct option. So to ensure that we can create multiple artboards within our document, all we have to do is make sure that this option where it says artboards is ticked. So yours might be looking like this and all you've got to do is press on it once to make sure there's a tick next to it and then we can create artboards within our document. So all we have to do now is press create. And as you can see, it's generated our file. Now, the first immediate difference that you'll see is that the image now has a border around it, which is this kind of dark gray border. And it's also got artboard one written in the top left hand corner. Now, what we also have on the layers panel is a new object called an artboard. So the artboard is very similar to when we group layers in Photoshop. As you can see, you can press on this arrow and everything within that artboard will collapse. But basically anything that we do to this artboard will always appear underneath this section. So when we start creating more than one artboard, it's very easy to navigate between all of the, our assets. So just like normal, we can do anything on this artboard. So for example, I can use this layer one that's automatically generated and I can go to my paint bucket tool for which the shortcut is G. I can go and create a new color. Say I wanted to fill it in a greenish color. I can select the green, press OK, and press once and as you can see I can fill in that layer. I can also go to the text tool with the shortcut T and type in some random text. I can go to command T, rescale it, drag it into the middle and everything and press OK. And as you can see all of this will fall under the artboard category so anytime you collapse this or anytime you can't see your layers all you have to do is press on this small arrow here. Great, so now we've got one artboard, but how can we actually create more than one? Well, the first thing we can do is we can go to the move tool and you can hold down this time. And as you can see, there's a new option that's appeared, which is the artboard tool. So if we press on this option, as you can see, the artboard selection changes. So we have some of these new plus symbols on the sides of our artboard. And as you can see, the artboard itself also has a blue boundary. Now the best way to think about this is similar to the free transform tool. So if I went to the side and adjusted the size of this, as you can see, we can actually adjust the size of our artboard. So I'm going to quickly undo that because I didn't actually want to make that change. So I'm going to be pressing command and Z to undo that or control and Z for windows. Now what these plus symbols do is if we press on one of them, it will actually generate another artboard that is the exact same dimensions of the artboard from which you press that symbol on. So if I were to rescale this artboard, just like we just learned, I can hold shift in order to keep it in proportion to its original aspect ratio. And if I now press on the plus, the size will be the same as the artboard that I've just copied it from. 
Now one very handy tool to know in order to navigate easily between all of our artboards is the hand tool. I have made a video on all the easy ways to navigate around Photoshop, so do check that video out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. The hand tool you can find close to the bottom of our left hand toolbar, and as you can see the shortcut to it is H. And all I can do is just drag and hold, and I can adjust the view in order to see all of my artboards. Now, as I said, artboards are very useful for a whole range of different design applications. But for example, one of those topics might be logo development. And even though you might develop logos more naturally in Illustrator, you can still preview and generate logos in Photoshop too. So for example, if this was my logo, even though it doesn't really look like much, but say it was my logo for this example, what I could do is I can press V on my keyboard again to go to the artboard tool. So the shortcut for which was V. And say I like this logo, but I wanted to make a few minor changes, but I also wanted a view of this original logo so I could compare and contrast my designs. Well, what you can do, first of all, I'm going to scroll up just so I have a bit more space. And we can press on this name tag of the artboard itself, which you can rename, by the way, if you wanted to stay organized just by double clicking on the name here. So if I press on this name tag and hold Alt on my keyboard, as you can see, my cursor's now changed and it allows me to duplicate this artboard. Or in fact, this duplicating shortcut works on a whole variety of different things. If I just hold and drag, you can see that I've now generated a new artboard. And I can release like this. And now I've got an exact replica of my initial image. And this will basically allow me to now make these changes to this artboard. So say, for example, I wanted to change the text itself, like so. Then as you can see, if this was the change that I wanted to make, I can still compare and contrast between the two different designs, which is very, very handy. Now, one or two things to bear in mind when you create artboards. If you're trying to save your artboards as individual images, then if you go to File and Save a Copy, what Photoshop will do, instead of creating an image per artboard, it will actually create an image of all of the artboards together. So in order to export your artboards individually, all you have to do is select the artboards that you want to export. So for example, say I wanted to export these two artboards. What I can do is I can just press on one and then hold shift on my keyboard to select the other two. Then I can go to file, export, and go to artboards to either PDF, if you want to generate a PDF from artboards, or to create any other file, you can go to your artboards to files. And as you can see, what this option will do is it will create this new window. And you can browse here to set a destination for where you want to save your artboard. You can change the name of your artboards and you can change a few of the parameters. So for example, what type of file do you want to create? So at the moment it's such a JPEG, but you can also generate any of the other files, including a normal Photoshop document or a PDF or a TIFF, PING, BMP, Targa, anything you want. And you can also change all of these settings according to what parts of your artboard you actually want to save. And then when you press run, it might take a bit longer than when you press save a copy. It will take Photoshop slightly longer to actually identify which part of each artboard you're trying to save. So do be patient with it if you have a whole variety of different artboards that you're trying to export individually. So I'm just going to quickly cancel that. Now, one other thing we have to bear in mind with when we have artboards is if I go back to my normal move tool, just by holding down on the artboard tool and selecting the move tool, now, one of the things that can be slightly confusing with artboards is when we create guides. So I have got a video that goes slightly more in depth about guides, but when it comes to artboards, if I make sure I have one artboard selected, so for example, this top one, and if I now wanted to create some guides in order to help me align and define the dimensions of this artboard, so for example, if I drag and move it to the halfway line, as you can see it will snap to the halfway line, and then I can do another one going the other way. But if I now select the normal move tool and actually press off of this artboard, then as you can see, these guides disappear. And when I go onto this other artboard, these guides don't actually follow on from this initial artboard. So this is just one of those things that you have to remember. If you can't see your guides, then it's most likely you don't have the correct artboard selected. So if I now select the correct artboard again, then as you can see, I can now see my guides. Another great thing about this tool is you can actually also just custom draw a artboard. So if, for example, you don't want to be too specific about your artboard, but you just want to create a quick option to allow you to make some changes to one of your designs, then all you have to do is actually hold and drag 
And as you can see, those two values, the width and height, give us some indication of what the size of our artboard will be. So if I just move it to wherever I want it and release, as you can see, it will then quickly create an artboard for that purpose. Now, if you want to move content from one artboard to the other, all you have to do is go to the Move tool. Make sure you have the right layers selected. So for example, I'm going to select this background and this text layer. And all I'm going to do is drag it over to Artboard 4. And as you can see, it's snapped to this new artboard. And the layers have now been grouped under the category of Artboard 4. But if I quickly undo that, another way you can also do it is just drag the layers into Artboard 4. As you can see, they then appear. But they will always align according to the top left hand corner of your image. So if I were to drag it back to the original one, as you can see, it snapped to the top left hand corner. And if I did it for any of these other ones, it would also do the same. So those were the fundamentals of how to use artboards in Photoshop. Do let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I will try to answer as many as I can. And please do also consider subscribing in order to never miss a Photoshop tutorial.